What's up, beautiful soul? Carlina La Curandera here from the Akashic Alchemist. Today we are talking about reincarnation, the nature of the soul, and we'll touch a little bit on past life progression. One of my favorite things in the world, yes! This shit tends to get me hype, so <laughs> you're gonna see a lot of expression and a lot of excitement and a lot of hand gestures. <laughs> All right, so reincarnation. One thing to kick us off with this conversation is that in order for a past life regression to make sense and to get into past lives, you need to believe in the possibility of reincarnation and being open to what that means. Reincarnation is the process of the soul moving through different lifetimes and different experiences in order to learn, in order to grow, in order to evolve. And this is what we call reincarnation. The incarnations are the lifetimes that your soul has chosen to view and to experience. There's this big concept between free will and fate. And if everything has a meaning or if everything has a purpose, does that mean we have free will? And from my perspective, I believe that the soul has had free will from day one, from that point of planning the next lifetime. So there's this really cool place that our souls go to after we die and before we're born called the land between lives. And the land between lives is a whole place that we could explore and there'll be a video coming on that later. But for now, we're just talking about this area where we are planning the next upcoming life or incarnation. And in this planning stage, we work out what lessons do I want to learn in this lifetime? Where do I want to step into my power with? So some people are working on activating their voice and may become public speakers. Some people are activating their courage and their bravery and may become some type of action sport professional. And, you know, your purpose and what your soul is learning isn't necessarily connected to your career, so to speak. Those are just examples around ways that souls can choose their professional career to help teach them about specific lessons that they are coming to do. And all of this kind of happens on a subconscious level, but let me rewind. There's so much to talk about. So with reincarnation, your soul decided where it wants to live on planet Earth. So this is where you can start getting into astrology and your birth time and your birth location being important into giving you clues as to who you are. Your birth location is a place where your soul decided that that geographical location is going to teach you about the people, the environment, and the culture. If I choose to be born within New Jersey, I'm going to have a very different upbringing within the Cherry Hill, South Jersey, Philadelphia area than if I chose to incarnate within the slums of India and versus someone who decides to grow up in the foothills of, let's say, South Africa or in the jungle of the Amazon. All of these locations on Earth hold a particular vibration and hold particular communities and groups that will imprint on us and provide us with more opportunities to learn and grow. In addition to your birth location, you also choose your physical body and the alchemy of your physical body. So you could also research, you know, traditional Chinese medicine or Ayurveda to learn a little bit more about your unique alchemy. But essentially, we have different energies that are flowing through us at all times and a tendency to, you know, lean into specific patterns. So some people lean into the pattern of being obsessed with their physical bodies or uh, perseverating on them or even having body dysmorphia and, and looking at their body and feeling like it's not their own body. And your physical body shape, the structure of your bones, the color of your eyes, your skin color, your ethnicity, your culture, all of these things that play into like the facial structure and the body type, all of that has been chosen by the soul. I personally feel this is super empowering to know that my soul got to pick out this body, that there were things about this body that my soul thought that I could learn from. For example, when I was born, I was born without two teeth. And for up until I think my senior year of high school, I finally got my braces off. I had braces for seven years that showed the gap of missing those two teeth. And during that formative time in my life, I felt so self-conscious self to smile and to fully express myself with what I looked like from my face. 
And so on a soul level, my soul chose that. My soul chose for that to be a part of my story. And now where I'm at in my life, it's still learning to love my smile, still learning to look in the mirror and love everything I see. And it's a continual process, but from a soul level, from a spiritual level, to know that that was a choice, that feels so nourishing and provides me insight that my soul wanted to help me step into my confidence and to have a challenge around my confidence. See, this is the thing with soul growth. When you set out a prayer and say, okay, please help me with my confidence. When your soul is planning your life, in order to learn confidence, it means you have to experience what it's like to not have confidence. The soul loves to experience things from all angles. So one analogy that my teacher, Michelle Granberg says, is you can imagine these different realities and possibilities like the facets of a diamond. A diamond is shaped and it's chiseled on all different edges on the tops, the sides, and the bottoms. And the, your soul wants to experience life from every single vantage point that it possibly could. So in order for me to learn that confidence, I'm going to have to experience what it's like to not have it. And that's where the power empowerment comes in, at least from my perspective, that if my soul chose this and my soul knew that there was going to be resiliency here, then let's dive in and unpack it more. In addition to your physical body and your geographical location, your soul has also made soul agreements or soul contracts. And again, this is a whole nother topic that we can get into on another day. If you're interested in learning about soul contracts and twin flames and uh, how to call in soul contract, new soul contracts or burn old ones, leave a comment at the bottom. Let me know. And if we'd like those videos, I will definitely make it. And so essentially in this planning stage, your soul is communicating with other souls that are getting ready to incarnate or have already incarnated. And you're making decisions to dance through life and play particular roles. So what's cool about this is that we are all playing different roles as we learn and grow and adapt. And I like to think that I have my own personality, which is a conglomeration of who I am at my core, my most authentic self, and bits and pieces that I've picked up along this lifetime. And then I like to think that my soul also has a personality, that all throughout all the lifetimes I have lived and will ever live, my soul has this memory. And we intentionally forget our past lives because... What fun would it be if you knew the ending? <laughs> what fun would it be if you had all the answers? There's a reason why we forget on a conscious level all of our memories and come to this lifetime whole and complete and so radiantly divine as infants. And just before you were born, when your mom and dad became pregnant, you decided on a soul level who you wanted your parents to be because their personalities and their tendencies and their own karma were going to imprint your life in a particular way. So this means that you were choosing and seeing the power that could come from these two people to teach you lessons. And one thing I always like to share with souls that I work with is that, you know, sometimes we come from a family that is abusive, that is traumatizing. And on a soul level, we all deserve to be sovereign and free. No one chooses abuse. No one chooses to allow their personal sovereignty to be given up to someone else. And on a spiritual and a soul level, before that abuse ha may have happened to you, when you were in that planning stage of life and viewing the energy of both parents, there was this trust and this knowing that whatever was going to be thrown at you and whatever processes and experiences you were going to go through as a child of theirs was going to help your soul's growth. So we can kind of hold both of these things at the same time, that our physical human selves, our emotional selves, our inner childs never deserve any type of abuse. And on a spiritual level, there's a ton of empowerment that can come from looking back on our lives and the choices our soul has made to incarnate with particular people as a source of free will and empowerment. And this is where we can get into, you know, burning soul contracts. You know, I do see people who cut ties with family members. Um, just because we chose on a soul level to go through life with them doesn't mean that you have to keep going through life with them. Uh, so I always like to give that disclaimer that we have free will at any time to change the course of our lives and to add or change any relationship that we have. 
So, so far we've talked about how the soul has free will and has chosen your geographical location of where you were born, that your soul has chosen your physical body and all of the attributes that come with your beautiful body, as well as your parents. Now, there's also this idea that we soul, uh, from a soul level, we choose to incarnate with people in soul groups or soul clusters. And I'll talk about this more on the soul contracts video, but essentially the soul groups and soul contracts um, and soul clusters, I should say, are groups of souls that your soul likes to travel with. So just like when you're walking around in this incarnation, you got your homies, you got your friends, you got your people behind you, you got your tribe. Your soul also has that. Your soul has people or souls who it enjoys being around or where your energies mix and you like to teach one another lessons. You might be surprised to know that some people that are in your soul family or your soul group or soul cluster are people who might annoy the shit out of you in this lifetime. It might be a really terrible boss who has agreed to play this role to teach you whatever lessons. And in the next lifetime, you might be best friends. Um, usually I find though that people who we tend to have friction with tend to keep that karmic pattern going on a soul level. Every once in a while you might change roles so dramatically, meaning one lifetime you're really close and then the other lifetime you can't stand each other, that like polar opposite. But what I find is that most people tend to have people within their soul cluster or soul family that really resonate with them on a deep soul felt level, on a tender level. And I don't know if you've ever had this experience, but uh, if you meet a stranger and you feel like when you hug them or touch them or look into their eyes, they just seem so familiar to you. Or when you meet a new friendship and it just feels like, gosh, I feel like I'm having so much deja vu or I feel like we've been here before. And we can trust that information that comes from the physical body, that comes from the soul, that there is a remembering that's happening and it's magical. And so we also choose the people that we're going to run into in this lifetime and bump into. I know for myself, I've had plenty of experiences where I have made new friendships or even with my partner, where there were many opportunities that we could have met in our lifetime. And we'll run through our history and say, oh my gosh, I went to that same school. I can't believe I never met you until now. And it's just this knowing that our, these, our souls are going to find each other once again. It's like magnets with people who are in our soul family. And we have our soul family, we have our soul groups, we have these people we love to incarnate with. And we also have people who we have spent many lifetimes with in other places other than Earth. So this is what's really cool about reincarnation is that energy is energy. And you can take the form of quite literally anything. I think our indigenous ancestors and the keepers and guardians of the lands across the earth have so much wisdom. And a lot of indigenous cultures will pray to the rocks and will pray to the air and will pray to the fire and to the water and to space and to the ether. And these prayers are this knowing that there are spirits and energy within all things. And so I have had clients that have reincarnated as a rock <laughs> and it's a little bit like, um, this is really weird. I feel like I can't move and I'm just kind of stuck here. And, you know, the lessons that are learned there are groundedness and stillness and patience. And, you know, in addition to that, from being able to incarnate as elements, we have incarnated as animals and living as different animals that walk this earth. I've had a past life regression as a wolf and I was communicating telepathically with people within my pack. And the other facet of this is that there are intelligent life forces that are beyond human, that are extraterrestrial, living on other planets and different star systems. So this idea of reincarnation and past lives really can get so expanded that your soul has chosen to live here in Earth school during this incarnation, right? Mother Earth is a school. It's a planet full of really grounded, dense energies and this full spectrum of human emotion. But there are other planets and other star systems out there that operate with different laws, different laws of physics, different laws within that planet system itself. There are multiple universes as well. 
So when we start getting into the cosmic nature of reincarnation, it's this beautiful expansion that your soul can even remember on a subconscious level different planets and places that are like home. I work with a lot of people that struggle with belonging here on Earth, and I believe that they are star seeds. They are souls who have incarnated on different planetary systems that are not Earth, and adjusting to this denser 3D frequency is really intense for them, or they struggle like they're the black sheep of the planet or the black sheep of their family and struggle with, with belonging and feeling like this is home. So when we start getting into reincarnation, you can see how it can begin creating a sense of trust and a sense of ease to know that there's so much beyond this physical scope that we can see and feel and touch. That on a karmic level, your soul has this memory of all the places that it's been. And this is where we can start exploring past life regression. And past life regression is a hypnotherapy technique where you work one-on-one -on -one with a practitioner who leads you into a light trance and using psychotherapy and using these techniques, I personally am inspired by the work of Dr. Brian Weiss, which is the lineage that I learned under. He wrote Many Lives, Many Masters, as well as Edgar Cayce and Dolores Cannon. I kind of blend um, three of their techniques. With reincarnation as well, you know, your soul has made a lot of choices and it can sometimes be easy to forget that we have that level of free will and choice. So I want to teach you a little bit about the nature of the soul and the choices that your soul made before you incarnated. And my intention to share this with you is to empower you and inspire you around just how much possibility and strength and resiliency that your soul has to have made the choices to align you to where you are now. In a session using these techniques that are passed down from generation to generation, we can bring the mind into an altered state of consciousness. And in this altered state of consciousness, we're no longer latched onto this 3D plane. We're starting to ascend into that 5D plane or even higher dimensions where the soul is able to remember lost memories. And past life regression, I usually say like past life because I've had people incarnate into the future, like seeing Earth hundreds of years from now or incarnating on a different star system that feels very futuristic. I've had people go back to ancient times where it's clearly on earth, but nothing that matches our history because not all history is accurate and there's so much more that has happened that's not documented on paper, so much history that has been lost. So past life regression is this practice of exploring what incarnations your soul has had. Where has your soul been? And in that process, you remember a lifetime of memories and people and experiences that shape and mold that soul personality. And so the soul remembers old fears. Um, it remembers grief. It remembers the joys and the lessons as well. And on this conscious plane, we forget all of that because your soul is wanting to evolve. It doesn't want to have all the answers like an open book test. It wants to have the book closed. And if you want to tap into it, you can through things like Akashic Record readings, through astrology readings with a really good intuitive astrologer. Shout out to Divinely Jennifer. She's my queen, my astrologist, my friend, as well as through past life regression. So... I love doing past life regression sessions with people. It is one of my favorite things because I get to witness people enter into an altered state of consciousness and travel to these different lifetimes. And we get to explore places that are earthly or even outer worldly. And in a session, typically there's enough time to go to that land between lives after death, which after death is the place where we integrate and learn the lessons and reflect back, you know, what worked, what didn't work, what is some of the next stages of what my soul wants to learn. And it's an integration phase of the life that you just lived. So past life regression and reincarnation has really opened up my heart into the magic of this world. It has inspired hope in my life to know that there's so much greater meaning and it has expanded and strengthened my connection with spirit and with the universe because I get to witness the magic of 
experiencing a full past life and then the death and the land between lives, the integration of all those lessons and also reflecting on the choices that my soul has made in this incarnation and what I want to learn. And by exploring past lives, I've seen people really alleviate tremendous fears like anxiety, especially if they've lived some painful lifetimes where they weren't allowed to fully express their voice or shine who they are to the world. I've seen people rewrite the story of their lifetime now and step into a place of empowerment. I've had people call in and manifest fertility and understanding the blocks around the sacral chakra and where that might come from. I've seen people manifest and heal from um, different types of emotional and energetic traumas in this lifetime by reincarnating in another lifetime where, let's say, they were the one causing harm to somebody else and really understanding that energy and where it comes from. So by exploring the nature of the soul, you're really able to grasp all aspects of the diamond and start to see the fuller picture, start to see the magic that's unfolding. And it's also just a fun ride to see like, where has my soul been? You know, um, I find it interesting earlier in this video when I was naming um, random places where your soul could incarnate, I mentioned uh, India and South Africa and Brazil in the jungle. And those three places are places that I know I'm drawn to. And they just came out subconsciously, a little organically, but on a conscious level, reflecting back, they mean something to me on a soul level. So I'm curious, I'd love for you to drop a comment below. Let me know where do you think your soul has been? What places are you drawn to? Or maybe if you have any specific fears that you can't really find a root behind in this lifetime, do you think maybe you've lived a past life where maybe that fear was actually an experience that your soul went through? And also we could feel free to comment on your free will and the choice of where you live. Where is where you, where you live encouraging your growth or the choice of your parents? And I'd love to start a dialogue. Let's get this conversation going. Feel free to reach out to me. I'm on social media. You can email me, Carlina La Curandera, and you can send me a message on Instagram or an email. And if you'd love to work together for a session, I would love to connect with you. I do past life regression therapy professionally. And what's cool about past life regression therapy is that I don't tell you what your past lives are. I lead you into an altered state of consciousness so that you can remember it. And we actually have a dialogue. So I'll be asking you questions and inviting you to explore and also supporting you in the integration of what comes through. How does that apply to your life now? And how can that support your spiritual, emotional, and physical healing? Remembering these memories provides deep and profound change for myself and for the souls that I have the gift to work with. So if you're interested in knowing more, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be putting out videos consistently on the nature of the soul and reincarnation. And I love hearing experiences about past lives. So feel free to reach out. For more videos on the nature of the soul, reincarnation, Reiki therapy, and all things spiritual, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. It is a simple way to say thank you and offer an energetic exchange just by pressing some simple buttons. And by commenting, you can create a dialogue that I would love to hear more about your experiences on a soul level. My name is Carlina La Curandera. If you'd like to stay connected, feel free to give me a follow over on Instagram. I also have a podcast called Ancestral Awakenings, and there'll be more content to come. Until next time, beautiful soul.